Hello and welcome to gaming and welcome to a Cricket 22 video about how to bat in Cricket 22. So I did a version of this on Cricket 19 and it's my most popular video on welcome to gaming. But I am a little bit embarrassed to say that I only went into certain details on the batting. Specifically I discussed the camera angle change that I felt is best to be made and a little bit on the timing. Now of course there's a lot more to batting in these games than what I said in that previous video and with Cricket 22 having released a few months ago I thought it would be a great idea to do an update version of this. So in this video I'm going to tell you how to bat in Cricket 22 and how to score hundreds of runs in Cricket 22 with a few different tips that I've picked up through playing the game. Now I do want to say that I am not an expert on this game, I'm actually not the greatest player on it myself, but I do feel that some of what I have to offer can help players at different levels. Before we get into this video, if you would subscribe to Welcome to Gaming, that would be excellent. I'm on the march to a thousand subs, you'll see a lot more Cricket 22 content as well as other sports games. So starting off with the basics that I suggested in the previous video on Cricket 19, if we go to settings, general settings, and we look at your camera settings, I find that batting mid is the best batting camera. It brings the camera down to the mid level and gives you a good eye line for the delivery. You could play around with these and try out some of the different cameras and see maybe if different ones are better for you. The reason that I settled on batting mid was because in the Nets training on Cricket 19 it was actually set to batting mid whereas in the games it was set to batting far and I preferred the batting mid. A few other little things to think about as well is having the transparent keeper on when batting so the keeper won't block your line of vision. And I also have started using transparent batter as well. Just helps specifically with spin bowling, I find. Um, you, often you can't see where the delivery's been pitched um, if you've got the full batter on. So having the transparent batter on does help as well. Now getting into the actual batting of the game, certainly in the test format of the game, you can figure out how a bowler will deliver. They usually have two or three goes and you'll you'll figure out that they're doing a certain delivery. I actually find it difficult with the left handers but you see here with the timing there you took that one around the corner it will only go for one run. Now being on a right hander I do find a lot easier. We'll see where Adair is bowling these. Keeping them pretty straight We'll see if this one stays pretty central. Yeah, we can once again hit it over the leg side if we take that step across. And that's something that I will discuss further. Now, all the different formats of the game provide their own challenge. Test cricket is probably the easiest, I would say, to bat in because you don't have to play every shot. So you can use the block shot to your advantage if one's not looking too tasty for you but yeah that's the beautiful thing about the test game is you do have the time to settle in and your confidence with your batters is going to be key for instance at the start of an innings both batters will have red on their confidence meter the more you keep them there at the crease and knock the ball around the sooner it will increase to orange yellow and then green. Once you're in green, it's time to have fun. The one thing you do want to try and do is manipulate the field. You know it's safe to hit it up, get it over, and it'll give the captain something to think about. So once you've figured out a bowler's sort of standard deliveries, of course they will mix it up from time to time. You just got to try and not get caught out both in the field and generally. As you can see, there is a little gap here, the leg side, we can exploit now. 
And the more we do that, the more it's going to give the captain something to think about. So as you can see, he has now changed the field, which means this one is going to be a little bit different for us. And there you go, we missed it. So when thinking about manipulating the field, it's a big advantage to move around in your crease, figure out where you need to be to make these shots. You can do big steps by holding the L button or little steps by tapping it. As you can see at the minute, it's not ideal for me to be messing about with movement in the crease, but once you get settled, you can hit one off. Now that didn't really result in anything for me, but for that one, I've hit over the top, it was safe enough, but I had to get the timing right, otherwise that would have been a catch. So my other tip for this game is to play with some headphones on. As I say, timing is crucial, and the sound is a big indicator to that. So headphones really help you. And you can see we're just pumping sixes now. So the big difference with the short format of the game is obviously the fact that the fielding restrictions are applied at certain points. You've got the power plays to deal with. Now these are typically the early overs and in some competitions you do get a chance to apply your own. Something full like that will be dispatched. You've got to score your runs in the short format of the game quick in the opening overs because certainly for me the short format of the game is the one that I struggle at the most and any of you that do come to my streams will notice that I get bogged down in the middle overs scoring maybe one run two runs but never really getting the boundaries as you can see here, this spin bowler is keeping me at bay here. Now what I'm going to try is I'm going to try a little dance down the wicket to hit this little big. And there we got it absolutely spot on. But only because it was pitched a little wide and it was at a good length. Got to get the timing right on those, otherwise you're going to get stumped or the ball's going to get caught. Once you can get the timing right on those, that's with the R3 button pressed in before the delivery. Absolutely smash it against spin. And that's the best way that I've found to take on spin. I'll go for a four, a little bit fuller. Hit it on the half volley. For 16 off the opening over in a T20 game, not bad. We've got another spinner, so. Looking at the field here, there's not a great deal that I can do with that delivery there. Now it's opened up a little bit on the leg side. We're gonna step across, as you've seen me do. Now if it's pitched, now it's not been pitched in a similar area. We have managed to knock it away on the drive. So I had to change at the last minute there. As you can see a shorter spin delivery there. A Little bit risky going for it, but I was confident enough, pitched a bit shorter, front foot shot still worked out. And as you can see again, the R3 pressed in before the shot, the dance down the wicket, timing's good and it's a 6. So at the minute you can see that I have Nabi's number, Raman caused me more problems. There's another one. I'm just going to keep doing that until he decides to bowl something different. Now then, that might be a catch. Should have blocked because he changed to a full toss there. And that's caught me out with the timing on that shot. So like I said, if you get the timing wrong on those, you're looking at a catch or a stumping and you've just seen that happen. Lovely little reverse sweep there. Again, another one you've got to get the timing right on. The timing is slightly different in Cricket 22 to what it was in Cricket 19. And it's a different for different shots now as well. So 
to the sweeps, you've got to go a little bit earlier to play the shot. I've got the timing not quite right in that one. There. Again, safe to go back over the bowler's head. Timing was good. It was at a good length for me to go for. It's basically all about practicing. I, when I first started this Cricket 22, I was struggling with the batting, very much so. Now, as you can see, I've started to get used to it. That will be a catch. That timing early, I've gone high. Oh, and he's put it down. But you can see the difference when the timing's not quite right. To be honest, it wasn't the best one to attack and probably should have been blocked. See, that one's safe enough. Timing was only okay, but it's beat the men in the field again due to the power play that we're currently in. And these runs you must go after in, certainly in the T20. Go. this one's going to be caught yeah there you go I actually hit that one okay but it was short delivery so because it was a short delivery it's sort of popped up in the air and stayed there longer so to summarize depending on the format of the game you can spend time at the crease don't have to play every shot you can try and just get settled in don't have to play big in the test matches straight away get a feel for it get a feel for the bowlers that you're coming up against they all bowls different line and lengths and delivery types some will start to swing it it's just about judging what they're doing whilst protecting your wicket once you start to figure them out you can then start to look to play shots around the ground through the gaps make sure to keep an eye on the field in the radar at the top right and see if you can start to manipulate the field by moving the ball around in areas that they don't want you to be hitting it use your crease if you can if you know that the delivery is going to go down the leg side then move across to the off and get it hit in the shorter format, you don't have as much time to settle in, but you do have the advantage of the fielding restrictions. So, again, you don't have to play everything, but you do have to make your mind up a bit quicker about where you want to be studying your crease, where you want to be hitting the ball, if you can hit it big. A lot of the times you can play the, the bigger shots in the shorter format, in the early overs because of the fielding restrictions but you've got to get your timing down make sure to play the game with headphones on find a camera angle that suits you and you will be scoring lots of runs in no time on Cricket 22 and just before I go I will list some of the specialty shots for you all so you know so clicking R3 you see it raises the bat makes the batsman dance down the wicket this is particularly strong against spin not really you wouldn't really do this against a pace bowler like i am now see it's not really having an effect but you saw me earlier that's r3 before the delivery if you want to change your mind at the last minute go for a block it'll look a bit funky but that one there you wouldn't want to attack that you're looking for the more good length deliveries Again, it's not really something to do against pace spoilers, but I'm just showing you. For the block, you hold R2 and play your shot. Again, you've got to get the timing, but it doesn't matter as much with the defensive shots. Change your mind at the last minute. This is good to throw in there. It's also a good one to do if you're unsure your lofted shots are with L2 held down. Typically you want to go for these if they're a bit fuller, so this isn't really a good one to go for. You see, 
held through, lifted the ball up there. A bit better. And swing the analog. I should have said earlier that I'm using the classic Pro controls. For the spin, if you want to use a sweep shot, you've got to hold L1. So for the spin, you want to hold L1 and get your timing absolutely spot on do a sweep shot. One little final tip is R1 uses your precision shot and this will poke the ball into the sort of the infield so it won't put pace on the shot it'll kind of take it off of the shot so this is particularly good for trying to manipulate the field poke a couple of singles doubles maybe in there you might make a captain think about changing his field certainly if they're blocking off the boundaries this is a good one to utilize now some shots that I haven't quite figured out, like some of the special shots like the ramp shot, can't quite get my head around how to play that still. So if anyone's got any tips for me on those shots. Playing on the front foot or the back foot. So front foot, you're gonna be looking at something delivered a bit more full. The back foot, it's gonna be something delivered quite short. Sometimes the short delivers you can do on the front foot as well. And those are my tips for batting in Cricket 22. Hopefully these help you. I know that I got helping quite a few people in Cricket 19. And I didn't really go into as, as much depth as I have done here. Um, there might be some things that I've missed. Let me know in the comments if there's anything else you'd like to know about for the batting. And I'll be sure to try and answer those for you. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you would. And I'll see you soon.